And welcome to Carcone Carney. I'm James Van Osdell. Still in quarantine, although temporarily, at some point toward mid to late April, Carcone Carney will emerge from its cocoon, chrysalis-like, and begin doing things out in the, in the world again. I'll be behind the, behind the wheel. We will do interviews in the car again. We'll do on-site interviews. I have a lot of stuff planned, a lot of restaurants to get to, just like it was back in, I don't know, like 2019. Caracone Carne back on the road within the next few weeks. Be watching, looking for announcements along those lines. And I'll still do stuff like this. I'll still do stuff from home. I, I think a lot of us have learned cool things over the past 12 months that we can take with us into the post-vaccination world. And for me, it's being able to do interviews like this remotely. I plan on having local guests in my car doing the, the old school Carcon Carne format. But there are guests who don't live in Chicago who I still would like to talk to. And for those guests, I will continue to do things like this. And for guests who maybe aren't vaccinated yet, I'll continue to do this. But uh, I like the kind of hybrid model moving forward. So that's coming soon. Uh, I did, did I say Carcon Carne? Sponsored by Siren Records McHenry. If I didn't, I meant to. Siren Records McHenry, you know, my son is coming back from school this week. And I already know the one thing he's going to want to do other than order Lou Malnati's is go record shopping. And when we go record shopping, we go to Siren Records McHenry. It's like being welcomed by family, a very nerdy musical family that kind of gets you. So Siren Records McHenry, go visit them. And speaking of records, I want to mention one more time, if I haven't mentioned it enough already, this album right here just came out. Josh Caterer, the front man, the, the voice of Smoking Popes, recorded at the Hideout. It is the Hideout Sessions, available on the Honorable Pravda label. This record is so good. It's Josh and this band doing a bunch of old standards. Beautiful vinyl record. Uh, recorded at the Hideout to an audience of none, to an online audience. It was recorded pandemic style. Uh, the liner notes are spectacular. I say that only because I wrote them, uh, but the music couldn't be better. Josh Caterer, the Hideout Sessions, friend of the show, friend of music, friend to all. So tonight it is a returning guest. The returning champion is George Zach. He is Odd Kid Art. That is his gnome to art. Uh, George, nice to see you. I know you, you have just a massive amount of artwork to share with us tonight. I, uh, you, you've been busy since uh, last time I talked to you was like Thanksgiving time. Yeah, we were supposed to do um, St. Patrick's Day, but I'm behind everywhere. So uh, getting ready for a big show. So I have uh, a lot of stuff to do. I've put off commissions and I've put off, uh, you know, friends paintings and stuff like that because I just need the inventory, you know, I, I had blue hands from today. So, so it, it's the proverbial good problem to have. Yeah, it is. You know, uh, being busy is a hell of a lot better than having nothing. So Right. So the art show I just referenced, it is happening Saturday. It is it is at Anderson Galleria, 5247 North Clark, right over there by Foster and Clark, the lovely Andersonville neighborhood. People can stop by, see your stuff. And more importantly, George, see you. See me and buy stuff. And we'll have, you know, champagne and hors d'oeuvres and stuff like that. Because that's what you do at an art show. Yeah, this is my first, you know, and uh, wait, 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 stop, stop right there. This is the first time you've ever done an art show, like as in a like absolute professional art show. Absolutely, that's so awesome. It's, it's nerve wracking, you know. I well, I mean, as long the art's already there, the rest is easy. It's just <laughs> you shaking hands and talking about your art. You've already made well, everything. Something to be said for uh, putting yourself out there for judgment. That's uh, you know kind of its own thing well you would yeah, i mean you know your uh your uh personality you know and uh when you let people into your life so to speak or they you know when they kind of know you or you give a piece of yourself there's always kind of weird uh apprehension to it you know I, I get it and here's the here's the simple rule if people don't like you they're wrong if they do fucking geniuses yeah, exactly. that's all Absolutely. you need to know if they, if they get it, they get it, you know? If they get it, they get it. So I want to show a lot of the stuff that will be on hand on Saturday. And I'm going to wrap up with a, an original piece, which will not be at the Anderson Galleria, uh, which was custom made by you for me, which is absolutely the coolest thing I've ever seen. But before we get there, let's talk about what we're going to see at the show. Sound good? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I, I literally, minutes before the show, show recording started, downloaded this massive zip file of like 30 plus images they're in no order other than the way they tumbled into this folder so 
we're, we're going to kind of wing it here. I'm good uh, with a paintbrush, not a keyboard. <laughs> I understand. All right, so we're just going to we're going to try to blast through these because these are a lot of images to share tonight. Uh, let's just let's just start rolling through. What are we looking at? Uh, this is just a poor fluid art painting that I did. Um, it's one of those ones where I actually, I hate it. And, uh, the ones I hate and kind of end up framing are the ones that people are like, I love it. And this actually goes with another heart that's, uh, blue on the top. So it's like a two piece set and it's, uh, you know, sorry that they're out of order. Um, it's weird. The ones that I don't like personally are the ones that get the like greatest reception, you know, and uh, this was a fluid art, um, you know, it's a pour and whatever. And it kind of came out this way. And when I looked at it and I poured some more, I, you know, just kind of threw splashes on it. And it did, it did look like uh, I embellished it to be, you know, more heart shaped, but, um, and everybody that's seen it, absolutely loves it and i can't stand it so somebody buy it i'll discount it hey, isn't that funny though you never know what's gonna pop you never it, know it's so strange too because the ones that i like spend so much time and effort and i they're like a you know in a weird way like a child of yours or or something like you know not that dramatic but the ones that i'm like man i love that one people are like yeah it's great but i like this one of course <laughs> funny all right, now this this is cool. This looks like something that, that came out of 1965. It's a uh, very um, you know uh, Picasso ish whatever. Um, I had uh, artist block, you know, uh, very much like writer's block or mm -hmm. whatever. Well, you know, when you're sitting looking at a blank white canvas, a lot of times you're just like, uh, and. And I just started drawing like squiggles and lines and whatever, and it kind of came out. And there's also um, another uh, photograph of this that shows it in black light because what I've been doing lately and experimenting with is paints that look different in different lights, you know, strong metallics. Uh, there's a company called Culture Hustle that makes the absolute best paints in the world. And they only make, you know, 30 paints or whatever, but it's you know the uh the black is black the pink is pink the glowy is glow the you know and and to play with these things uh one of the ones you'll probably uh bring up at some point is this weird rabbit that i did with the you know psychedelic carrots and that one is actually hyper color so if you warm it or you put your hand to it or whatever it, it changes color and and this is this was one of the ones that started with it so I, you know, I experimented. If if you can pull up the black light version of this one, it's uh, ah. I mean, it, yeah, exactly. It's uh, all these things that I'm doing are very duality. Uh -huh. So um, you know, like I did, you know, street art with high fancy frames, or the kink art, or whatever that I've done before. The other series are now morphed into you know, the optical duality. I guess. So for people who are listening, as opposed to watching, uh, first of all, the frame is gorgeous. This looks like a, a very lovely blue frame. Uh, the, the picture itself, the, these very stark, vivid, swirling colors, the, the swirling blues and the, the kind of pink, uh, very striking, but dead center, it looks like, I mean, to my eyes, it looks like a pair of eyes like bleeding Absolutely. green eyes that, that are disruptive to the overall flow of everything else they they, they kind of add a little, little bit of darkness to the purity that i'm looking at here well and that's the thing it's uh it's a duality you know of the you know van gogh's or picasso's or everything like that um mixed with you know my version i'm a, I'm a you know I'm an alley painter, so to speak, you know, I'm not a graffiti artist. I'm not a whatever, but I am, you know, what I am, you know, uh, for lack of a better term, liars club, rock and roll, what, whatever it may be mixed with the fake fine art that I'm doing, you know? So <laughs> I, I like the juxtaposition is the word I'm searching for. All right. So we're going to, again, try to blaze through 
please through these because there are a lot. All right, we are we're in the black light section of this folder. Clearly, uh, is this the first picture we saw in black light? That was the first picture. Okay. So on, under a black light or under, you know, any different kind of uh, light than it is white, you know, white or, or fluorescent lights. Any any little difference changes these paintings that I've been doing. So it's like a, um, it. So I went to uh, sorry to take take you on a tangent, James. I went to Zion National Park this year with my son and some friends, and uh, when the sun comes up through the canyons and it's like pewter and all these colors and and they're literally a mile high canyons. At 10 o'clock in the morning is completely different than 1007 or 1008. And, and I like the idea of creating art or whatever I'm putting out, call it what you want, um, that it changes in different lights and different times and different, you know, things that it is a, a you know, a fluid or a live type piece, you know, it's a kind of a polarizing like a, you know, like a lucid dream right where you're things are morphing or or whatever in front of you and you know the the light changes things you know the light in your backyard is different at 10 o'clock than it is you know four o'clock in the afternoon got it okay and because you have a black light i'm guessing you'd be a lot of fun at a crime scene <laughs> or a hotel room right <laughs> no that that's not a fun place to take a black light uh all right so what are we looking at here this is another uh, black light image the frame looks really cool this one was a, uh, a fluid pour and it reminded me of, uh, for lack of a better term, a field of marijuana. And uh, it just kind of had that vibe to it. So I just left it alone. You know, that was just thrown on a canvas and moved around a little bit with, you know, a lazy Susan or, you know, my shaker or whatever. And it was one of those things. I rarely stop when something's good. I rarely yeah. stop. What I, what I have the tendency to do is fuck it up and then fix it and make it completely better than it originally was. And this was the rare piece that I was like, wow, that just looks cool. And it glows cool. And it looks cool without the black light. And I like it. So I, I, whether it was, you know, my friend Rob or, or my fiance or whoever, somebody stopped me and said, nope, don't touch it. And I left it like that and, and I like it. I love so it. It's, not it's the, very pleasing for some odd reason. Not the first time that marijuana and black light have been mentioned in the same sentence. Or art, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is trippy. So it's, it's a bunch of eyes. Now this is very, this looks very graffiti art it, to me. This is, um, so I recently started using a bunch of different mediums. You know, I've always done watercolor, acrylic, or oil. And this was the first time I went and I put a big investment into airbrushing. And it's hard and it's expensive and it's very, um, it's a lost art, right? Because, uh, you know, when you think airbrush, you think the like, you know, big eyed cartoon character or the, you know, rest in peace type t-shirts or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was huge in the like late nineties and, yep. and early two thousands. Well, I was like, well, shit, man, I get to spray paint faster. You know, it, it was like a, a natural progression for me and to use glow stuff and metallics and, you know, color changing and mirrored paint and all these things. And what this was, this is the, this is going to be the, the showpiece of the Andersonville Galleria thing for me. So uh, and it get, help, help, two, two help me understand here. How big is this piece and what is it painted on? Cause I can't really tell. Three panels. It's three panels. Actually, it's probably. Uh, oh, it's right behind I'll you. Call it like three feet by four feet. Okay. All right. And, um, it's 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 there's still some touch-ups and there's still some things i want to do and this was one of those things where i was looking at these panels and i kind of liked how they sat an inch apart from each other and i started painting with a brush and then painting with a spray can and then painting with an airbrush 
And uh, this one was kind of, um, it was personal, you know, and this one was very, um, it's uh, like, it reminded me of the eyes of judgment, right? And that's why I made the, uh, you know, the tentacles or whatever you want to call it. It kind of reminded me of snakes in the grass, right? Well, yeah, right. Because, because a lot of everything... people don't want you to succeed, you know, and that's the harsh truth. So yeah, everything looks vaguely reptilian. Hey, yeah, it's a, you know, it's a, the, there's a bee in there and there's, you know, your own brain and, and Chicago PD or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's the eyes of judgment, you know, and uh, it's almost rebellion in those eyes of like, watch me, motherfucker, you know? I love I, it. I got, I, got, I got it, you know, keep watching. All right, so this and is... That, that's, the, that's the image without any of the black lights. So oh, sweet. Okay, so you get a perspective a of huge duality, you know? Got it. Okay, so again, I love the framework. Each piece is housed in its own frame that is a part of the piece. Um, what, what are we looking at here? Oh, well, this one. Um, so there's probably a, a lot of your listeners and myself included that uh, played a game called Call of Duty. And they had a, uh, a mini game within the game that was the zombie game. And you know, uh, there was another one that was in the arcade that you shot with the guns or whatever, but, you know, zombies break it in the house and they kind of uh, knocked off the boards and you either nailed them back up or shot them. And it, I, I had gotten this glowiest pink and the glowiest yellow or whatever from Culture Hustle. And when I started playing with it, it reminded me of haunted house paint. And you know, what do you see in the haunted house? Like dead inside or don't come this way or help me or whatever. Right. And I just kind of like, I saw it as this, you know, this window of, you know, a haunted house. It's, it's a, it's an October piece, but I liked what it was doing. And, you know, I had this frame, which was actually from a, uh, from an old manger. That's uh, so one of the neighbors was throwing out that they put out for years. I love it. I don't know if they hate, I don't know if they like the idea that I use their uh, you know Christianity manger to make a uh, zombie death window. <laughs> and, and happy Easter, by the way. I love horror stuff. So th this one it, it speaks to me especially. And that, this one also has a black light version, which is of course it uh, it's unbelievable. So there it is. There, yeah, exactly. The very dawn of the dead, you know. Uh huh. Oh, hang on, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So this is a butterfly? Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I did was um, for this one, I was just kind of, I wanted to make something street art, but pretty. And what I did was I took the background and I made it, you know, a wall in Logan Square that's been painted and painted and painted and painted and power washed and, and stripped over and painted again and, and spray painted on. And uh I liked it. the 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 wall The background itself looked amazing, and I kind of thought to myself, "It's almost like uh, you remember the book from high school or grade school, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn." Of course. So it's very like you know that weed between the crack cement or you know um, perseverance or you know whatever kind of version of that. And it's like so I took the the Vanta Black and the Black 3.0 from Culture Hustle and put it on there and that captures, or I'm sorry, that refracts 98.6% of all white. So when you see it in perp and when you see it in person, the black outline of the butterfly, like on this image is standing out. Mm -hmm. And when you see it in person, it just, it's nothing. It fades away. It's like a black hole. And again, we can see that in person at Anderson Galleria, Andersonville Galleria. I wrote Anderson. That's a town in Indiana. That's a nowhere town in Indiana. Andersonville. Galleria. Or a millennial kid's name. <laughs> it's true. Andersonville Galleria, 5247 North Clark. All right, let's move on. This is this is a, a colorful piece. This looks kind of as techy. What are we, what are, what's this all about? This was another one when I had writer's block or artist block, I should say. And uh the the big eye in the center. Mm -hmm. I drew kind of an almond shape and 
it came from there and it got so intricate and intricate and intricate more um that I, I went down a rabbit hole when it comes to like, oh, okay, now I need to pink this up, this line and, and whatever. And by accident, this was my first black light or different kind of piece because I, unbeknownst to me, I made this piece and I used paints and I used paint markers and I used spray paint and I used all kinds of stuff. And I didn't know what it looked like, like under a black light or if it glue or whatever. And uh, three months after I made it, I, I just happened to put one of the black light bars I have down and it shined on it. And it, it, it kind of blew my mind that that was there without my knowledge, you know, and there's a black light version image that I sent you as well. Let's see if I have it. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's cool under the black light. And it, it, and it it was by accident. Like I did it. I, you know, I want to do these things on purpose, but I was like, holy <laughs> shit. You know, like I, it, it was happenstance. I love it. All right. So let's move on to. This looks scary. That's uh, the monster in all of us, you know. Uh, I, was, I was right. It is scary the gold of it and the uh you know there's a lot of things i make that i don't make with intention in mind but then mm -hmm. come out like when i look at this now what it means to me and when i interpret you know going to the art institute or whatever you know however you interpret emotionally or thought provokingly of any art i made this as a poor painting and whatever and it you know the eyes and the mouth and the everything were gold and it's you know the uh the monster in all of us chase money chase fame chase this you know go after things um you know the green-eyed monster of greed or or mm -hmm. envy or you know it, it's we're all we're all fighting that one that's inside of us and that's the yin yang or duality of nature or you know whatever in general it's uh everybody has a demon or they're uh they're fighting you know all right this is all right <laughs> i'm not even sure how to describe this it, with with now keep in mind i this is my first time seeing all of these uh so red frame it looks like looks like a, a flat pig's face I, yeah it's a big fat pig getting ready to roast with an apple in his mouth you know and uh i, I don't <laughs> i uh it's funny that you brought that one up and i you know framed it cherry red like a you know bright apple in a pig's mouth and maybe it's a chef thing or <laughs> whatever but you know I, I i i don't know i really don't have anything to say so, about well that. it's fine it, it, it's, kind of exists. it just kind of exists if you're into original art and pork this is your and dream pork. piece right here <laughs> it's, yeah it's uh, uh well okay so staying on the food tip this is unexpected it's the stoned rabbit with a bunch of carrots uh yeah i mean it's uh once again it was it's uh you know there's you as a podcaster or someone as a writer or a you know a, a musician as a band there's there's times that they have you know very direct uh things that they want to do and then there's things that just kind of happen you know oh i like that riff or you know, uh, Keith Richards sitting on a plane and said, I can't get no satisfaction, you know, and things of that nature. And this one just kind of came out and it's weird. It has, um, uh, uh, Ralph, do you have a torch or something? Um, this one is actually a, a, a hyper color. Um, uh, it, oh. it changes with temperature. So the outside or the, yeah. the purple turns pink and it, it's one of those things where it's like uh it's got resin it's got you know uh vanta black or i'm sorry black 3.0 it's got uh, glow in the dark it has you know hyper color stuff on it and then i was like well what do i do with the psychedelic rabbit and i was like well you know what yeah. fuck it i'm gonna make some glowy ass carrots and and that's how it's gonna get framed with just 
I'm just trying to make cool shit that makes me laugh or makes people smile. It's it's aren't we all weird and it's it's so stupid in the best way. Because a lot of people were like, oh, Donnie Darko at first, you know, because of the black rabbit. Yeah, but, yeah. You know. And like, there it is under black lights. Yeah, it's it's dumb in the most way. <laughs> yeah, there's shout out to Raf for helping me with the frame and uh carving all the carrots. So he did fine work. It helps being a chef too. So wait, did I somehow get through everything? No, there shouldn't be. There should be a, a bunch more. Um I, I got through. Why, why don't we talk about uh, your nostalgia piece? Oh, I will. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. I think there were a lot of duplicates in here. That's why. yeah, because okay. it, it uploaded. I wasn't connected to Wi-Fi and the Google Drive, and you know, technology. Uh, we're gonna, well. you and I, <laughs> are gonna have a separate Zoom, and I'm gonna screen share. I'm going to deliver like the best Google Drive 101 for you. We're we're gonna we're gonna get through this Thank together. You. It's got to wait till after my art opening because between the catering company and this art studio, I'm slammed. And again, good problem to have. I, but I know that doesn't lessen how busy you are. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, all right, you look, I, I don't ask for anything. I, I don't. Absolutely. I don't ask for any kind of compensation from guests or anything weird like that uh, but you've been kind enough when you've been on this show to provide or to create something original original piece to talk about um, during our conversation so earlier today I received the latest original George Zach odd kid art piece and it is I mean it, it couldn't be more personalized and try to hold it up as best I can to my webcam i'm going to have to move my mic in order to do so i can't see what i'm showing right now but this is the the frame and the background are made to look like a turntable so much so that you have a tone arm attached to the to the canvas and in the center of the canvas is a vinyl record with the atlantic <laughs> label on it but the the tracks on this on this record oh they're they're all singles really um, side two, uh, track one, Carcon Carne, track two, WLUP, track three, Toki with Skokie, right? <laughs> Four, Q101, uh, it's a place I used to work, and XRT, I worked there for about five minutes, but that's why it's a, a deep cut on uh, <laughs> side two. <laughs> but I, I love this, and you know, some of my favorite artists are represented, especially the artists who I grew up listening to. There's the, uh, the Bowie Lightning Bolt, because I grew up listening to Bowie. Alice Cooper, who uh, I, you know, I listen to Bowie and Alice all the time. Um, but this is cool. The anarchy symbol, of course, the odd kid art <laughs> logo, uh, which you can find on any modern turntable. And this is I mean, <laughs> pitch control, uh, the, the buttons and Record City, where I, I nurtured a, a lifelong music buying and acquiring addiction as a kid. So that, that logo is part of it. it. This is pure JBO nostalgia here. Well, and that, that was the thing. When we ended the last show, I had done maybe 10 pieces or so of nostalgia art. And, um, you know, I did like a, a Mad Balls painting that I didn't show you and stuff like that. Um, because to me, I started realizing that, you know, the Mad Balls or whatever were or the Nintendo controller or whatever it may be, that was someone else's art. So... You know, I belong to all these groups and guilds and, and websites and stuff like that. And people are like recreating Disney or, or whatever. And it's like, it's a great painting or, you know, the technique is beautiful. It's very visually stunning, but I, I wanted to do, I don't, I don't want to ever reproduce somebody else's art. Right. And um, that's for them. And if they want to sell prints or if they want to, whatever up to them, that's fine. But when we ended the last episode, um, I asked you about your nostalgia and your perfect summer day. Cause mine was filled with, you know, debauchery and, <laughs> and, uh, you know, whatever it may be. And you said yours was record store day and waiting and the Tuesdays when stuff came out and you couldn't wait to run. And it was record city, which believe it or not, finding, 
uh, symbolism or logos or whatever from Record City is as huge and popular as a, a place it was and as important as a place it was, there is nothing online. There is right. no, I want, I looked for a day and a half just for, just for logos of it. And uh, they're, they're plastic bags it used to be like people hold, held on to them and reuse them. Cause yeah, it, was well, a cool logo. It, was. it was on like Reddit or whatever. And uh, there was, you know, pictures of a plastic bag and that's where i stole one of the logos because as i remember the store i'm sad i was never a vinyl kid you know um during those times i was you know breaking my arm skateboarding every day you know <laughs> and uh i i wish i i wish i found music long long before i did so yeah i mean i we didn't have a lot of money but we'd spend an entire day at the record store just walking up and down the aisles looking at album covers figuring out what what we could buy in the budget bin for five bucks but i mean i remember going seeing artists at in stores who didn't resonate with me then but looking back i'm like holy shit i can't believe i was there like psychedelic furs and king crimson these artists just showed up at the record store back in the day when i was a kid and they, you could I walk was up and stones you know that was our uh the hip the hip was my mall so rolling stones was right there and uh you know, it was the same thing. It was like, uh, you know, all of a sudden, you know, whoever is signing autographs or they're at a random Harlem and Irving Plaza store right. that's not even connected. So I, I still uh, go to Rolling Stones, by the way, occasionally. They have by far, well, maybe not by far, but they have a significantly large metal selection on CD, like a, a pretty untouchable variety of metal CDs. I mean, what do you do with a CD nowadays, though? I don't know how to plug it in my phone. You know? Yeah, well, I, I've graduated back to stereo components and CDs, and I, I'm at the point where I swear I would never be where I wish I hadn't given away all my CDs, uh, but that, such is life. But the point is, they've got a great metal selection. You're a vinyl, you're a vinyl guy, right? Like uh, I, I'm just a music what, guy, but yes, I, I like I like having music. What, um, you know, there's always a argument of, you know, Oh, the crackle of vinyl sounds more authentic or, and then the, uh, you know, MP3 or the CD are the purest form of it as, you know, electronically. So what, what's your, uh, what's your thought on that, on, you know, the difference between vinyl or CD or eight track? Or my, my thought, my thought on that is it's a really pretentious conversation to have. I, <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not an audiophile. I couldn't tell you the difference between the way a 180 gram slab of vinyl sounds as compared to a record produced in 1989. I, I just I like I like the ritual of collecting. I like the ritual of listening. And I, I've said it a million times. So forgive me if you've heard me say this before. But when I listen to music digitally, I'm very ADD. I, I very much skip past stuff. I don't sit through it i, I might That's go gone. through the first That's minute gone. and keep moving the beauty of listening to vinyl specifically is that for better or worse you're locked into that that album for 15 25 minutes at a time you're and going to listen to the locked art of it you know that's you it be able to put on a zeppelin or or pig floyd or doors album and listen to the album and now with cd or whatever they I feel like they don't even really make full albums to be, you know, a full story. Or... Well, I think that's coming back around mercifully, but it's true. When you listen to an album side, you're listening to the good songs and the bad songs. When you're listening to things on a playlist on Spotify or wherever you stream, everything's a la carte. And it feels like a very detached listening experience well there's and, something more, more deliberate and, about and, and hold. sorry go ahead when i go to grab that josh caterer record that i showed at the beginning of the episode yeah. it's a deliberate act i'm pulling that off my shelf i'm committing to josh for at least 20 minutes probably probably the full 45 50 yeah, minutes yeah, exactly. but, but if, if i were just streaming the album i might just say oh let me see okay he covered that song oh there's need you around and i'll move on to the next thing not out of disrespect but that's just the way i consume digitally well, everything remember, slows down. Remember what happened in like, you know, late 80s and stuff like that, where, you know, bands didn't want a single. They didn't want to have the, you know, one hit wonder kind of Mr. Big or, or whatever kind of thing where they were like, please don't put that out because we want to be known as a full band or a full, you know, 
full artistry so you get pigeonholed and you know i mean i guess that's uh once again that's a duality or juxtaposition is like you know would you rather have your 15 minutes of fame or none at all or you know same thing with me would you rather be an artist or be famous or this or that i i mean i just want to make cool shit and i, I that's hope it you, you have to do the stuff that makes your heart happy i if you're if you're doing it for any other reason you're you're leading yourself astray Purge, you can't purging you, purging. you, you have to get it out it, it's know? great to make money doing what you enjoy it's great to profit off your art but if you create art specifically designed for profit it, it, it'll explode in your face it, it's not a long-term well, prospect that would be painting you know the biggest art that's sold for the last hundred years is you know seascape and ships and uh mm -hmm. boston whaler and yankee clipper and those are no matter what bar done it's the biggest art that that's consumed all the time you know a very east coast uh you know antique clipper ship type uh seascapes or mm -hmm. or whatever and i mean if, if you want to be an artist to make money as a job that's awesomely honorable you know because you're you're putting goodness into the world or you know you have people like me like i james I, it's an it's an it's an obsession now i have to get it out of me and i don't know how to stop uh, when i <laughs> lay down and go to sleep it, it's like a a movie reel running with different pieces of art that i'm like shit now i now i have 500 pieces in my head that i have to make i love it and so taking us back to the very beginning here odd kid art is the the website it is the instagram persona yeah it please. needs some it needs some tuning up to be honest it's, don't uh, we don't we all <laughs> yes i and wish it would uh get some hgh like from the nfl or something so we could <laughs> feel a little then, better you know and uh, then the saturday night 40 hertz you know saturday night you will not be in anderson indiana mercifully you will be in andersonville over by clark and foster at the andersonville gallery i love that yeah, part of uh, town one to six it's a daytime thing you know they they've uh curb their hours since covid just like everybody and um they're a great place man it, it's almost a farmer's market of artists so <clears throat> as i'm on the top floor doing you know my show and champagne and blah 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 you you can't even get to where my art show is without walking past 70 artists i love it um you know, there's uh, everything from basket weaving to this, that, and the other, and uh, it, it's cool. It, it was really cool, and all local handmade stuff, and local artists, and, you know, support it. Where uh, everybody talks about restaurants, or and I'm a caterer myself, but, you know, restaurants and bands and stuff like that, and, you know, I support my clubs, and I support my bands. Um, people need to remember that there's, you know, artists and knitters and you know covid mask makers or whatever all out there needing the same help so support yeah. local art please thank you all right okay. so george thank you for the work you do and keep letting it pour out of you thank you so much for the nostalgia piece which i hope i hope people got a good sense of like it. Oh like my god it. are you kidding me i love it and uh go see this man go drink champagne with him and celebrate his art saturday night i mean champagne and george zach that, that's a saturday saturday right there that's great that's great it's surprising more people don't like that idea. <laughs> all right george thank you for doing this again thank you james always a pleasure brother um i'll uh i like making ones for you because you're appreciative and they're uh tailor-made and that's a that's an enjoyable thing so um keep up what you do and uh we'll all keep listening <laughs>